So, how relevant are our local difficulties at a time like this? Deputy Leader of the Alliance Party, Naomi Long, is with me. You're very welcome. Naomi Long, are we kidding ourselves to think that local politicians could make any difference to what's happening at the moment? And in such circumstances, do we really need them? Well, I'm not suggesting that the Assembly has some kind of magic wand to deal with the credit crunch. When you see large governments like the US government and administration actually struggling to have an impact on this, there is no way that the Assembly can completely turn it round. However, at a very local level, a lot of this comes down to people's confidence. And they're not going to have confidence if they see their politicians not focused on the issues that matter to them. What they need at a time when the finance markets are in crisis is to see stability in the political situation so that at least if there is investment out there it won't be dissuaded from coming to Northern Ireland to actually locate because of political instability and also to know that their politicians are dealing with the, I suppose, the very localised effects. I mean there are things that the Assembly can do. Gordon Brown has made it very clear when it comes to things like dealing with fuel poverty. It's a devolved issue. So we need to focus on allowing Margaret Ritchie's plans to get to the executive and actually start to be dealt with. And well, so people feel the benefit of a local administration. We can't turn around global crises. We hold our hands up and say that's beyond what we can do. But we can make a contribution to the individual in Northern Ireland about how hard they're hit by what's happening globally. But they're beginning to look uh, the whole political class like an expensive luxury and they're the ones enjoying the expensive luxury. I mean, is there any end in sight to this ongoing stalemate? The war of words is escalating, but there doesn't seem to be a cut-off point. Is there any mechanism to bring this thing to a head? Well, I think there are a couple of things. I don't think it's only the people who are not part of, if you like, the political classes who are frustrated and angry with this. Those of us who go to Stormont every week and want to see it working are also very frustrated and very angry about it. That's the first thing. I think that there isn't, from what we can tell, any formal mechanism to bring this hiatus to a close. It requires goodwill and cooperation. Now, it may well be that at some point somebody will want to try and test in court how long this can continue. The problem with that is you're essentially pressing the button which will implode the Assembly. I mean, we had uh, Reg MP yesterday uh, saying that it would last into. 2009, possibly. You know, is it acceptable that, no, that it continues no, like that? No, no, it's, it's absolutely not acceptable. And I think one thing that the public perhaps can do at this time is tell their elected representatives, regardless of what party they're from, that it isn't acceptable. Because the bottom line is, people were elected, they have a moral obligation to do all of their job. And they're not doing all of their job as executive ministers at the moment. And it's fine for the Assembly to debate, pri to debate private members' business and so on, on a week-to-week -week basis. It's fine for us to go up there and do our our job in the committee and that's what we're up there to do but those who are there to be ministers need to meet as an executive to deal with cross-cutting issues because things like the financial situation like fuel poverty are cross-cutting issues child poverty takes in health it takes in education it takes in the debtie minister it takes in the employment and learning minister the education minister you cannot deal with that any way other than around a table but you as the alliance party have styled yourselves as the official opposition that's a position that's under threat surely when we have have Alliance being, you know, touted as perhaps uh, holding the portfolio in policing and justice. Are you seriously consider coming into this group and removing uh, the opposition at a time when people would like to see one? Well, the difficulty at the moment, Jim, is trying to convince anybody that the Assembly will still be there to have policing and justice devolved. Um, at this point in time, I think there is a real crisis of confidence in the community. What they want to see is the executive functioning properly. And at that point, when they have confidence that it's a stable executive, you can then talk about giving it extra responsibility. I haven't met anybody in my own constituency who has said to me, I have such wonderful confidence in the Stormont administration that I want to see them doing more than they're doing at the moment. What they're saying is they need to do the job they've already got in front but of them. But at a time when Alliance uh, would maybe be burying its teeth, are you uh, in fact playing footsie with the other parties and trying to get into this position? For instance, we had during the week the Executive Committee, uh, the DUP, putting forward a motion to try and get Alliance onto that committee, seen as a first step perhaps uh, to giving you this portfolio. Well, on that particular issue, be clear about that we said on the day that that committee was set up that we deserved a place in that committee. It's the Assembly and Executive Review Committee. We're the only party up there who are in the Assembly but not the Executive, so we have a perspective that's valid when it comes to looking at the administration. However, as for playing footsie, I hold my hands up, I'm open about it. Of course, we're talking to all of the parties. We are the opposition, but we said we're constructive. If we had a constructive government, that would be even better. It's the Executive that's not being constructive, not the opposition. So whenever David Ford says, never say never. That's just political speak, really, for make me an offer. No, I think what it's saying is that the time, the time is wrong. I mean, David's been very clear about this. We, I think, anticipated at St Andrews that what we needed was stability on the streets 
in order that people would have confidence in a local administration to take on policing and justice. The reality is that we've had that stability on the streets, but we haven't had it in the political institutions. And it's almost now reversed to the point where we need to have more confidence in the political institutions and their durability, and not just their durability to stay in place, but to actually do something and deliver. You cannot have a situation where policing and justice is devolved into a stalemate. That is, that is ridiculous. And I think anyone calling for that is being irresponsible. What we need is to see the executive able to discharge its functions, discharge its duties, deal with the issues that matter to people at the front line in this kind of crisis situation. When they've proved themselves, that's a serious time to be talking about giving them additional responsibilities. What would be the point if there was a mechanism to bring this thing to a head and there was an election? What would be the point of an election tomorrow or even next year, whenever the current mechanism of government will return all the same parties and perhaps even the alliance into the government at Stormont? Well, of course, the, the, the point of an election is that what you can have is you can have a change in the weight of the different parties within an executive. So you can change, if you like, the focus of different parties, the amount of control that they have in that situation. But I imagine that Sinn Féin and the DUP are not angling for an election so that they can see other parties take pole position. They want to come back reaffirmed with a bigger mandate, which simply means that you have a stalemate with bigger parties involved. Now, I don't foresee that that resolves the, the fundamental differences between them. And I have to say that I think that a lot of people would okay. wonder if this executive hasn't worked, previous combinations of unionists and nationalists haven't been able to make it work, what is the point? So okay. I think that there's much more at stake than just party political positioning. I think it's people's confidence in the institutions. Naomi Long, many thanks indeed. Thank you.